Let's see what we got. Wait for a couple more people to get in before we get started, but um, I appreciate y'all for, for hopping in. Yeah, um, George Jordan's fumble was definitely, I feel like, a huge turning point in this. Um, it definitely hurt a ton. It, it was it, it was a really tough, tough thing to happen, but, I mean, it is what it is. Hopefully my voice will cooperate. For the remainder of this, um, <laughs> hopefully my voice will just be able to cooperate. I did a lot of yelling during the game. Cheering on my team, unfortunately, came out on the wrong side of the um, of the win-loss column. So uh, let me get some things squared away real quick, and then we'll go ahead and get started. But definitely appreciate you all for hopping in. Um, let's see. I know I got some sponsors I got to talk about. All right. So let's get it going. Okay, pop this up. All right, let's go. Unfortunately, on Saturday afternoon, turnovers and big plays loomed large, and the Governor's Cup loss to the Kentucky Wildcats will break down what exactly went wrong for the Louisville Cardinals on Saturday. So with that being said, let's get right on into the show. You are Locked On Louisville, your daily podcast on the Louisville Cardinals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome into this reactionary episode of the Locked On Louisville Podcast. I'm your host, Dalton Pence. Today's episode brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On College for $20 off of your first purchase. As always, I want to personally thank you all for making us your first listen of the day. Just a reminder, the Locked On the Louisville podcast is free on all streaming services, five days a week, your team, every day. Well, unfortunately, um, the regular season came to an end with a loss for the Louisville Cardinals, losing in the Governor's Cup 38-31 to to Kentucky. It was an up-and-down game. There were instances to where we saw some good stuff from Louisville, Unfortunately, the bad stuff really loomed large in this one. Turnovers and big plays specifically will give an instant reaction. We'll talk about what went wrong, silver lining, everything you need. Obviously, this is um, this is a ton of complex um, takeaways. It's a pretty fresh loss, so if I don't make sense at times, uh, do forgive me on that. But um, I'm going to do my best to try to vent the best way I know how. And I appreciate you all for hopping in and everything. Um, you know, definitely leave some comments. Um, let me know your all's thoughts. Obviously, there's a lot of disappointment at, at the moment, but we're going to try to get through it. Um, the loss itself, 38 to 31. The first thing for me is that I feel like this was more so Louisville beating Louisville than it was the other way around. Um, now, granted, that's not me not giving Kentucky credit because you have to give the other team credit. Uh, they went out and they put 38 points on the board. They won the game when big plays need to be made. Mark Stoops' team made the big plays. You have to give Kentucky credit for making those plays, and that's what we're doing. But I feel like there were multiple instances to where Louisville really hurt themselves. I mean, you talk about the two turnovers, one of the turnovers – or. Well, technically there were three, but the two that really the really switched the momentum. The second one specifically um, was pretty unforced. It was kind of just a self-inflicted error. Jawar Jordan's fumble, you have to secure the ball, but at the end of the day, credit to UK for forcing that fumble. Um, and then you have the missed interceptions in the first half. There were a couple of them. There was the fourth and three play to where they had Ray Davis in the backfield that would have given Louisville the um, – given them the ball at around the 40-yard line, but credit to Ray Davis for making it happen. He had a fantastic game. Like I'm saying, I, me saying that Louisville really hurt themselves in this one isn't really taking away from how well Kentucky played. One thing that you can say about Kentucky, make it for what you will what they've done this season. One thing that you – cannot say it is not able to be argued is that Mark Stoops knows how to get his players ready for this game. They, no matter what they've done all season, 
you can guarantee that they're going to come into this game ready. They're going to come into this game focused. And I mean, it, it was pretty evident. And when adversity struck, they still played pretty well down the stretch that third quarter. And like, like I said, we're going to kind of break down into it in the next couple of segments. Um, but the third quarter is really where I feel like Louisville lost this game. I mean, you could talk about the fourth quarter issues, but the third quarter is really where the seeds were planted for the Louisville loss. Uh, Michael, you said it best. The game changed after the 100-yard kickoff return. I don't necessarily know that it changed because Louisville went right down the field and scored again, um, but it, it set the tone. Because Louisville goes up by 10. They take almost 10 minutes off the clock to start the third quarter. It's 17 to 7. And now you're just hoping that your defense can just get off the field. And you give up that big touchdown on the return to Barry on Brown, which I really struggle knowing why we kicked it to him in the first place because Barry on Brown is an absolutely electric player. Um, you know, credit to him. But I mean, all in all, it's a tough loss. It's a loss that you look at and um, you can pinpoint certain things as to say, man, this is where Louisville didn't handle the little things well. If you really think back to the most recent episode of this show, we talked about um, the deciding factors. The first one was, was how was Louisville going to handle the emotional aspect of it? I felt like they did a good job. They came out firing. They had a great first drive defensively, had a great first drive offensively, and they came out ready to go. So emotionally speaking, I don't think that this was them just not um, coming out ready to play because they obviously were ready to play. Um, and then the other two deciding factors, the issue, the turnover battle and giving up more big plays than you had. And that's where the issues arise. You go back to what Kentucky did. And I, I, you know, we talk about Louisville defeating themselves. And I think that that's very much an indication or it is shown by the yardage. I mean, Louisville had 403 yards, Kentucky with 289. Um, now, granted, we'll talk about the penalties here in a second. I see the comments, but yes, the penalties are definitely something that we are going to talk about. Um, but to make matters uh, pretty clear, I felt like the Louisville had their opportunities to pull away in this game. They had the opportunity to where they were just itching to get a multiple touchdown lead, and it just wasn't able to be achieved. They gave up too many big plays, the touchdown on the kickoff. And then you go down and you score again. And then what happens? Kentucky goes down the field in two plays to score. And that's where things really start to get interesting. And at that point, you're playing with fire because, you know, you can say what you want about Kentucky, but when you're having to focus on your offense, having to go down the field every single drive and score because the other team is just scoring like that, that's where things get a little interesting. And for those just joining, I do apologize with my, vo with my voice. Being as hoarse as it is, I I'm struggling through this, but um, uh, we'll get through it. But the penalties are another thing. It is what it is. I personally, I mean, I can't in good faith tell you all that I remember a time in which there was a team that I've watched a full game having zero penalties. Now, I don't blame officiating for this loss. I don't like blaming officiating at all for losing because I think it's kind of lame. But it also just kind of makes you wonder. I'm like, okay, a team that is... 88th in total penalties per game in the country going to a hostile road environment. And you're telling me they have zero accepted penalties, not a conspiracy theorist. I don't claim to be, and I'm not trying to make, um, you know, a take with this, but I, I just think that it's, it is what it is. Oh, well, you know, oh, well, but, you just kind of have to uh, – I'm not going to blame officiating for this. Like I said, kind of lame, uh, kind of lazy. Uh, but I do think that it should be mentioned because it just blows my mind that that is a thing at the moment. Um, but let's break it down a little bit more. Uh, I want to go now into what happened in the second half for Louisville 
to lose this game. They had a 10-point lead with two minutes to go in the third quarter. We're going to talk about that um, here momentarily after we talk about our friends over at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, and LED headlights, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. Over 122 million parts at your disposal. You can always find exactly what you're looking for. And with the guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit every time where you get your money back. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Let's talk about the second half. The second half is where things went completely wrong. Um, and let me just preface this by saying I felt that Louisville got beat in all aspects of the game. Offense when it mattered, defense, special teams, and to a lesser extent coaching. Because I don't necessarily feel like the game plan was all that bad. I just felt like at some point the execution just wasn't there. Um, the second half confirmed the things that I had been worrying about, and that was the Louisville secondary. My whole thing ahead of this game was that if the Cardinals pass rush does not get home, then the secondary has been vulnerable. We saw it against Virginia. We saw it against Miami. We saw it again against Kentucky, and it's become an underlying issue. Jeff Brom even mentioned it, that the defense just hasn't been as good as it should be in the final three games. Um, I mean, it just, it, it is what it is. I mean, it's, it's pretty clear as to what the issue is. And I think that you look at, you look at those wins against Duke and Virginia tech. And I think that you're looking at two teams that wanted to run the ball specifically. They weren't able to do so. And they don't necessarily have the receiving core that Virginia, that Miami, that Kentucky, because despite those three teams record, very, very good receivers on all three of those teams. So it is what it is. Let me just get this out of the way. I am getting so tired of the – it's almost – it's pretty much an excuse at this point. It's a deflection. The whole, well, Kentucky isn't as good. This is their Super Bowl. That's why they win it. I hate it. I cannot stand when people say that. I get the premise of it, but why can't that be the case for Louisville as well? Saying that that's their Super Bowl really isn't the flex that I think that it's being portrayed to be. All that it's essentially admitting is that Kentucky takes this rivalry much more serious than Louisville does. We saw that the past four times this team played. It was pretty evident which side of the field cared more about this rivalry. The, oh, this is their Super Bowl. Isn't that supposed to be what a rivalry is? Like, you can make it your Super Bowl and also realize that there is a bigger picture for the season. So, I mean, it is what it is. And I feel like I keep saying it is what it is because, truthfully, it's really hard for me at the moment to really sort of process the the raw emotion in this. So I do apologize if, if it feels like I'm ranting. I, I know that you all wanted some more – uh, live reaction. So I'm hoping to deliver this and I'm hoping that it's coherent and that you all understand it, at least the way I'm trying to portray it. Um, but yeah, please stop with that. This is their Super Bowl take because at this point in time, it's only fueling the SEC is far superior than the ACC narrative. It's, oh, a top two team in the ACC can't beat a middle of the pack SEC teams. That's, I mean, it's, I mean, you're not going to get past that narrative at the moment. And that's just what comes with losing this game. And we talked about that being at stake, is that that narrative is going to be running rampant until you shut it down. You've now lost to them five straight times. And let's be honest, you kind of just have to go with the blows, go with the smack talk, and you'll work to beat them next year. There's really nothing else that you can truly say. Now, does that mean that this season is a failure? Of course it doesn't. And we'll talk about that in the next segment. Um, but – Let's go back on to the second half. Um, yes, um, I mean, the SEC is the best conference in college football. There's no debating that. Um, 
you you see what I'm trying to say here. I'm not saying that the ACC is pound for pound better or even comparable to the SEC. I'm saying that it's it, it's just really hard to say that, well, the ACC isn't that good because Kentucky keeps beating Louisville when it's a rivalry game and things kind of get thrown out in the mix. And it's really hard to tell you know how well that would hold up because the only Power 5 teams that – Kentucky schedules every single season is global. So it's really hard to get a measuring stick. I'm not here to talk about that. Let's talk second half. It was simply for me, the execution. I felt like the game plan was there. Louisville's offense was moving the ball down the field. But when you turn the ball over, one being completely in your own territory, it's going to sting. And it gave Kentucky the lead. Um, I mean, you're talking about going back and forth exchanging points you had the missed opportunity on the kickoff return you then had the two plays to where the first one was a wide open pass to isaiah cummings down the sideline he wasn't even being covered um and then you have um you also had the play at the end of that drive to where ray davis caught the touchdown now that was a pretty solid touchdown catch but it's two plays to where Louisville just went down the field. And then you played with fire. You had two really big runs to start the next drive. And then Jawar Jordan fumbles. And it really killed all of the momentum because Louisville was driving once again. But credit to Kentucky for making the plays down the stretch. You get to that fourth quarter. And, um, you know, I felt like it was deja vu from 2016 all over again. Um, you know, I felt like Louisville had gone to tie it up. And Kentucky was going to go down the field and kick the game-winning field goal. Ray Davis then went in untouched from about 40 yards away to score the touchdown. And, um, I mean, I, it's not the end of the world if a player scores in that situation because you need to get the ball back in your hands. And I would rather lose with an opportunity to go win than having to watch a game-winning field goal. Um, and then you look at – that final drive. I felt like it stalled out way too quickly. Things didn't develop. I felt like they weren't trying to go down the field. And then when they were, it was obviously too late. So at that point, it truly didn't matter. Um, too little, too late. You had a minute, you had the ball at the 27 yard line, and then it took you almost well over half the clock to just get past midfield. So I wish that it would have been more downfield throwing. The blame is on everyone here. I've seen a lot of blame on Jack Plummer. Granted, Plummer made his mistakes. He didn't have the greatest game. Um, but an unpopular opinion here, I don't think that he played bad. At this point, you sort of know what you're going to get from Jack Plummer. You know, the ceiling may be limited, but, you know, as long as he's not turning the ball over a ton, then he has the opportunity to help you go out and win games. This team scored 31 points offensively. And truthfully, they probably could have scored at least 10 more had it not been for the turnovers, um, et cetera. But you can play the hypothetical game all you want. Plummer, it is what it is. You can blame Plummer all you want. And there is no doubt that he is going to be criticized for this game. That fumble was absolutely unacceptable. No way to look at it. But it wasn't just him. I felt like the offensive line didn't create a ton of holes for the running backs to go through. Um, I felt like there were some drops from the skill position guys. The special teams was really not all that good, which is seemingly a rare thing to happen. And the defense gave up 30, technically 31 points with the with the kickoff return for a touchdown. But it was a loss that you look at everyone in that room. It's not just one player. And that's what I'm trying to get across here. But I do want to get into the final segment by uh, talking about some of your all's um, comments. So ask any questions. We'll, we'll answer them at the uh, beginning of the next segment. I also want to talk about silver lining. And we'll talk about that, um, what this loss does for the Cardinals here momentarily after we talk about our friends and the title sponsor of the show, Game Time. For me, you shouldn't have to worry about buying tickets to your next big event. Whether it's sports, music, comedy, or theater events, you need to focus on utilizing Game Time. It takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. 
Um, the biggest thing at game time for me is the last minute guarantee, meaning, meaning that you always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, use the code locked on college for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again, create an account, redeem the code locked on college for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Heading into the final segment of this quick reaction episode of the Lockdown Mobile Podcast, breaking down the 38 to 31 Governor's Cup loss to the Kentucky Wildcats. I, I do want to take this time to address some of your all's uh, questions, uh, address some of your all's um, overall comments. There was one. Let, let's take a look at these um, awesome loss, and we just couldn't grab hold of the momentum in the second half. I felt like we got the momentum, we just couldn't. You know, we couldn't just hold on to it. I, I agree there. I thought we grabbed it. I thought that we just didn't hold on to it. Um, yeah, the second half opening drive was key. Um, that kind of sucks. You look at it. Uh, Broly says, Brom didn't have these kids ready, plain and simple. I See, I don't agree with that. Um, because they started out and they played really well. They didn't surrender the lead until the fourth quarter. They had the lead for the entirety of the game. They got a punt in the first possession, and then they went on a long drive to start their first offensive possession. So personally for me, I don't necessarily think it was a matter of preparation. I felt like they were prepared. It just felt like Kentucky executed better down the stretch, and unfortunately that is sports sometimes. So Michael Singleton, we just clinched a spot in the ACC championship game seven days ago. We've never been in a position before. I think it had a small spot in the back of our minds. No excuses, just a lot to handle. I mean, silver lining is you still do go to the ACC championship game. It doesn't take away the significance of a 10-2 and two season. It does sting because one of your main, object, main objectives every year is to beat Kentucky. And I'm not going to use the ACC championship as a crutch to all, not necessarily justify it, but you know, say, hey, look, it's okay. We lost to Kentucky. It's not going to matter all that much because we still have the ACC championship. Nah, screw that, man. This game means a lot. And if you feel like it's not, then maybe this rivalry isn't for you. Um, let's see, Carla Jenkins. I think Louisville may have overlooked UK because they're playing in the ACC championship. I mean, possibly. I think that, honestly, this is just a rivalry game. Emotions are running heavily. I think that the Cardinals just, honestly, they did what you couldn't do. They gave up big plays. The two two play touchdown drive followed or following the can or the kickoff return for the touchdown. Two fumbles after that, and then giving up the big touchdown to Ray Davis on the last drive. So I think that it honestly was just a matter of execution and not doing the small things right. They were not hyped for this game. Like I can't, I can't really accept that. I'm sorry. Agree to disagree here. They came into this game. They held a lead until the fourth quarter. I'm sorry. I, I just can't say that they weren't hyped for me, um, but it is what it is. I think that you can – two things can be true at one time. You can be overlooking this game a little bit for the ACC championship, but you also can say that they were prepared. I felt like truly that they were prepared. Um, but regardless, you lost the game, and that's all that matters. Silver lining here. What does this mean? What does this mean for the team? For starters, I will say that losing to Kentucky, I guess it's just the Louisville fan of me, losing to Kentucky in any sport's unacceptable. Just is what it is. That's just the way I am. Um, but silver lining, it doesn't take away from how successful this season has been. You've won 10 games in the regular season. If you would have asked the majority of Louisville fans before the year, Hey, this team's going to go 10-2. and two. They're going to lose to Pittsburgh and Kentucky. They're going to go to the ACC championship game. If you ask 10 people that, how many of the 10 would say, okay, we'll take it? Probably nine. Likely 10. So it just goes to show you um, it is what it is. Broly, I agree. Stoopson makes it their Super Bowl. Brom needs to do the same. I think that he will. Um but we need to stop talking about, oh, this is their Super Bowl. Well, it should be ours, too. It's a damn rivalry game. Des Fitzpatrick tweeted out the best. Somebody said, well, it's their Super Bowl. Yeah, make it ours, too. Um, silver lining, it hurts. 
it's a loss that it, you can't really beat around the bush here. It sucks. There's no way to find any type of solace in it. But one thing that you can look at is that there is a bigger picture. You make it to the ACC championship game with an opportunity to end the season on a strong note. Don't let this loss negate everything that this team has done. It's not ideal. And it hurts a lot. I mean, I walked out of that stadium feeling just like I did in 2016 when I walked out of that stadium. You're hopeless. They're miserable. Whatever you want to say it. But, you know, all you can do now is look forward to the AC championship game, which this program has not been in since they joined the conference. Say what you want about the conference. It is what it is. The SEC is the best conference in football. Oh, well. Yeah, still go to Charlotte. Still cheer for this team. There's a lot to hang your hat on. Um, we're going to hopefully see the team continue to address needs in the transfer portal and try to have a great season again next year. Don't let this, uh, this loss sour the whole season for you. I hate this loss as much as anyone out there. I can promise you that to a T. One thing that I struggle with right out of the gate after the loss, but I'm starting to you know, put the emotions aside, is realizing that there is a bigger picture, that they are going to the ACC championship game. Um, you know, Losing to Kentucky is never fun, but you're 10-2. and two. You have a chance to make a statement against Florida State. You have to bounce back. It's going to take a lot of soul searching. Going to take looking at yourself in the mirror. So, uh, ask any final questions you have. Um, we're going to go for probably a couple more minutes, but um, just ask any questions you have, Kyle. Man, you and I are very similar in the way that we approach Louisville sports, the way um, we think about losses, about wins, about scheme, about everything. Um, yeah, this loss stings. Um, you know, I had a bad feeling about this game because I always do because they've beaten us four straight times before this. But, yeah, it hurts. It, it definitely hurts. And it is not easy for me to come on to this show and say that, um, you know, you go and you have to move on. Kentucky Blue, congratulations on the win. I'm, I'm not going to sit here and, I mean, there's no point. You know, congratulations. You, you won the game. Um, thing about it is, is the try playing in a real conference thing for me, it would be different if the team had legitimately more than one year in the past, what, 20 years to where they actually competed in the conference. I, for me personally, I don't go touting the ACC like teams do with the SEC, even when you're sort of, you know, middle of the pack against or a uh, middle of the pack in the SEC, um, you know. I, you've never made the SEC championship in my lifetime. And it is what it is. Congratulations on the win. But this whole, oh, well, try playing in the SEC. Well, you all do as well, and look where that's getting you. Potentially, oh, well. But, hey, not going to get into it. UK Blue or Kentucky Blue, congratulations to you. I wish you the best of luck moving forward um, in your bowl game. And it is what it is. The Jack Harlow and Davis face man. Jack did a good job making sure he knows Louisville is where it's at. Shout out to Jack. Um, actually played against high school or played against Jack in high school. Um, so it, it's awesome to see what he's doing. Shout out to him. Um, and it is what it is. Um, but yeah, never made it ever. L's down. Yeah. Oh, well, it, it's all right. We're looking forward to seeing the L's down even when you're not playing the Louisville uh, moving forward. But hey. Best of luck to y'all, but for real. Um, we'll see how things go in the bowl game for both teams. And moving on, but final thoughts here, uh, not to get too much into smack talk, but final thoughts here. It stings. It, it stings bad. Um, you know, I felt like Louisville beat themselves as much as they did in that Pittsburgh game. And it's come back to haunt them. And the self-inflicted mistakes were something that they couldn't overcome. You credit the opposition. Kentucky made the plays when they needed to make them. And they've got a lot of talent on that team. And I always told people around me that they could put it together at any given time. And I expected them to do so because one thing Mark Stoops does really, really well is he gets his team ready for this game. Say what you want about the program in Lexington. Say what you want about how he operates that program. But one thing that you cannot deny is that he gets his guys ready. He gets his guys believing 
in this rivalry. They hate Louisville, and it's time for Louisville to return that favor. So um, credit to Kentucky. Tough loss. You now move on to the ACC championship game. We're going to continue to break down this game as the season goes along. Um, I get it, you're all salty, but that is the reality of playing a week schedule. Go check out the um, strength of schedules and and get back to me on that. Um, I'm a Georgia fan. It's obvious that the schedule UK played was brutal. But does it matter that the schedule that they play has some top teams when you weren't even competitive against those teams it is my main question. But shout out to the dogs, man. Go ahead and run the table again. Get that third national championship. Um, a really good friend of mine is a Georgia fan, a guy that I work with. So uh, best of luck to y'all. Uh, but that's going to wrap up this episode of the show. Everyone have a great day. Have a great weekend. Hopefully y'all had a good Thanksgiving. At the end of the day, it's just sports. We'll see you back here very soon.